Hi everyone. Okay, back to doing some videos. I've made so many things and I haven't been keeping up with the videos, so I've got a whole stack of things I need to catch up on. But I had a specific request for this. Um, for the wrap crate. So I thought I'd get this video done today. Maybe I might get another one done as well. We'll see how the time goes or if I'm interrupted by the window cleaner who was here while I was out this morning who will want to pay it. But we shall see. Okay, so basically, overall, you need two pieces of A4. I've used craft pit, craft card for, for both of my two sheets. So the crate will be in craft card and so will the wrap. But you can use a combination of two different cards. You can use whatever. You will also need one sheet of 13.5 square paper, 30.5 square paper or 12 by 12. So you'll get this whole thing from two A4 sheets and one sheet of paper. Okay. Right. So I'll go through the various sizes you need. So to create the... I'll open it. To create the sides and the base of the crate, you'll need one piece that measures 29.7, which is the full height of an A4 sheet, by 8.5 centimetres. Okay, and then you want to score that at 9.9 .9 and 19.8. Okay, you will also need two pieces because you, we can't get, unless you've got A3 card and I just, I went for joining. Um, we can't get the full width of this from like an A4 card. So we'll join two pieces together. So to make that work so that the join is hidden. You'll need two pieces measuring 22 by 10.5 centimetres. So 10.5 is half the width of your A4 sheet of card. So you cut a piece in half and cut, the, you know, cut a portion off the top. Okay. And from the remains of your card, and I managed to get this out of one of the bits I cut off the top of here. You need eight slats. Okay, four for each side, and they measure 1.5 by 12.5, okay? And then you need to score at 1.5 at both ends, okay, to create the glue and tabs, and you need eight of those, okay? And you'll need your, it, it's, I'll measure just so I give you accurate measurements. I've used a two and a half centimetre punch, which I think is a one inch, um, to create these here, the holes in the side. And you'll need some kind of fastening for the front. Velcro, magnet. I thought I'd try one of these plastic poppers and it worked quite well because I could actually reach, the, the tool would actually reach down to be able to fix the popper in place. So if you have one of those, it'll work. Okay. So let's move some stuff out the way and I'll take you through it one thing at a time. I'll leave the, I'll try and leave as many in frame as I can. I'm guessing from what you can see in the camera at this point, but I'll do my best. Um, right, we're going to start with the, the wrap itself first because there's a couple of things we need to do on the wrap. Okay, so... First of all, on only one of these pieces, score a line at one centimetre. Okay, so just score the line and then nip off the corners with your scissors because that's going to be our join. Okay, so we're going to do that first. Now, I've got this crazy craft card that has different colours. I'm going to try and remember to use this as the front. So I'm going to turn it that way. And I'm going to put my glue, I've, and I've only scored the line, so I know exactly where to line that up to and where to stop putting the glue. So I'm just going to put some glue on this one centimetre tab here. As ever, it's Anita's Tacky Glue, just decanted into a different bottle so that I can squeeze it easier. Okay, and then I'm going to line them up along that score line. Okay. I'm going to use a bone folder, oh good, it's a clean one, to spread out that glue and wipe up, just wipe away any excess. Okay. Right. 
So this is what you have now. We are going to use that as a fold line, but not right at the moment. Just double check. You've got it all lined up straight. Yes. Right. Now. I'm trying to decide when the best time to do this is. Okay, let, let's do the, the pencil marks in a little while. Right. So now we've got this as one piece. You need to score it. Make myself some room here. Uh, right. Looking at the wrong side of my paper. That's why it's not making any sense. Okay. So we score at 10.5. The first score line going this way along. And hopefully it's going to marry up with that and I haven't got the wrong way around. I'm going to turn it over so I'm scoring on the wrong side. Right, so 10.5 is your first score line. 19.5 is your second and with a bit of luck it will marry up in a minute. Oh, we're close. 19.5. Thirty and thirty-nine. Okay, so that's your outer wrap. Take it up for a moment. So I'll fold and burnish on those. I must have started measuring from the wrong way because that doesn't line up. Try. Try both ways. Start your measuring from the other from either end and see which one because one of them does bring that down to this bottom corner. Or maybe not. I did this about three weeks ago, so I can't remember to be honest. Okay. It doesn't matter, it's hidden anyway. It, it, we're covering both sides with paper, so it doesn't really matter. Right, so there's your outer cover. It's done other than covering it. So we'll put that to one side for the moment and we'll come back to it. So with your crate body, okay, all you're going to do is score on these two fold lines. But then you need a pencil and a ruler because you can do it by eye if you want to, the positioning of these slats. You can do it by eye if you want to, but I'll put that over there so you might be able to read it. Um, but I found it easier if I did little lines for me, little marks for myself so I could find them. So this is like the top of the side and that's the top of the side over there and your slats are going to be the front and back. Okay, so to position these slats, what I did was I just went down and made a little mark at one. It's covered by the slats. So one, 3.5, six. And 8.5 and I did that on all four sides so again 1 3.5 6 and 8.5 turn that round and do the same on this end probably should have got this ready and it would have cut down on the video but never mind at least you see it start to finish And the last one. And these are all centimetres. Um, anyone who, who knows me knows I, I think in centimetres when it comes to craft. I can't think in inches. Right. So there we go. So now we know where we're going to start our slats. So they go, the top corner of the slat, the glue and part, will go up against those marks there. Okay. So... Before you do that, you need your circle punch and you need to mount it centrally uh, about there and punch out a hole at both sides for the sides of your crate. I'm not sure you can see that. I'm not too high. I don't know. So there you go. So you've got your two holes in the side right so 
go through all of your slots and I mean you don't need to bone fold them because the creases are so little they're only one and a half centimeters you could get away quite easily with just folding them so I'll go through them all and fold them all there'll be eight in case I didn't mention that uh, yeah there we go this is what I'm working with now there's your pencil marks we've just done there's the slats but as I say you can do this <coughs> in sorry excuse me you can do this in different colors of card um, it doesn't have to all be one color like I'm doing here okay so we're ready to go so I found it easier to actually put the glue on here on the side of the crate as opposed to the end of there but you can if you want it's, it's whatever you're happy with okay it just also all I'm doing is putting the glue underneath that little mark it also helped me with the positioning by putting the glue onto the card as opposed to onto the slats so then all you do is to make sure that that fold lines up with the edge of the card and that you're getting it against your pencil mark okay now it's quite good to work down on your on your cutting mat because then you know you're getting them straight as well so kind of sit the main body down a line on your cutting mat and try and hold it still a glass cutting mat isn't the best thing for doing this because it moves around too much but i'll get them on and then i'll show you by straightening them up so i'll literally just put one below each pencil mark onto that glue okay stay And then I'll line it up against a line and make sure these are in straight lines before the glue sets. It does take longer for the glue to dry on craft card than it does on regular card. I, I think it's just more absorbent. Right, I'm hoping they're all fairly straight there. Right. Don't do what I did the first time and then stick the other slats on what did i do the first time yeah i stuck the other slats here down these three and of course that was wrong because that's where they attach to so what you do is turn it round and go again and bring your, your glue up here i don't know how i did that i was just obviously me i was just quite happily messing around and i thought oh this will work nice i'll do this and then of course I had all the slats on one end so it didn't work okay line us up I lost track of that top pencil mark there I'm hoping it's in the right place covered up with glue so another tip don't cover your pencil mark with glue This bottom one's quite good because it almost touches the bottom of the, the crate. Right, I've got them all in place again, so I'm just going to try and make sure they're all in a straight line. That one definitely isn't. Okay. Right. I think that's going to be okay. I don't want to move it just yet. That end anyhow. So... I'm going to do what I did was the same again. I actually put the glue on here as opposed to the ends of the slats. I knew that glue wasn't dry yet. Um, as opposed to the ends of the slats. I just found it easier. But if you find it easier, use it <coughs> easier the other way, go with it. Okay. Doing the second one is a bit easier because you've got your first ones in position. So all you're really doing is lining them up. It's probably better to start at the bottom. Lining them up with your pencil marks on this side. 
So I'm sorry, I can't kind of, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this. But you know what I'm doing. I'm literally just doing what I did at the top end. Again, down here, just lining them up with that pencil mark and the edge of the card. One for this side. Okay. Right. Oh, that one's moved a minute before it dries. So you, I'll try and press these down and I'll be able to show you better what I've done. So as you say, I've literally just stuck those to the same pencil marks as, as were on the other side. Now I'm going to take it to the outside and just check that the fold actually is on the edge of the card and I'm going to wipe away any excess glue while I'm at it which will obviously help it dry quicker that one doesn't move there we go right we're nearly there at this side I think it's nearly dry Right, and the final panels, I'm going to, uh, final slots, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to put my glue inside the box. And then bring these down onto it. And at the same time, try and line it up to make sure it's um, not protruding too much over... Over this edge of the card. And I'll try again with that one. If I was patient, this would work better because the glue I use is called tacky glue for a reason. Because if you put it on and then leave it for half a minute or a minute, it becomes tacky. Um, and these would then stick easier. I'm just an imp. I'm just an impatient crafter but that's why it's called tacky glue because if you leave it for a little while it goes clear and that's when it's tacky and it's but it's just before it dries completely so you've got to kind of know you know grow accustomed to that point where it is no longer liquid and has become tacky right I'm going to risk picking it up so I can straighten them off. Uh, hmm. Of course you could always staple these. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. It actually would work staple, but I didn't really mean that, honest. There we go. Right. I'm going to put that down for a second to let it dry. And I'm going to come back to the wrap. Okay, your wrap. We'll cover the outside first, we'll finish with that, that can go out of the way. So, there are four pieces of your paper, each measuring 10 centimetres squared. Okay, this is all from that one sheet of your paper. And those four pieces go there, and there, there. <laughs> Brain work. Um, so, front and back. And then... So you've got two pieces that are only 8.5 centimetre wide. They go on the top and inside. You obviously don't need anything on the bottom. Okay. And then you've got two pieces that measure 10 by 3.75, which go on there and underneath there. Okay. So that's how it's going to look on both sides. Okay, I, d I actually missed a piece on this one because I was using scrap paper and I ran out. And I couldn't find a one that would work, so I just left it there. Right, but as I say, we're going to stick the crate on that one, so ignore that one. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my papers down. And this is quite nice. Paper's quite nice red on the this side, so on the inside I might use the plain red. 
to show rather than the aged red. I'll see. Right. But as the a square piece, it's just a case of sitting them within that square and giving yourself a nice even border all the way around. Uh, again, this is a paper pad from the works. Um, quite nice quality. Um, I think it's an older one though, so the works don't tend to keep their paper pads for long. You know, they'll do some and they run out and then they'll bring in some different ones. Um, but all of their £3 paper pads have 24 sheets double-sided. Uh, and it's always good quality paper, so it's well worth buying. Um... I mean, I even buy pads that I don't like any of the designs in because I can construct with them. I can work things up with them and it doesn't bother me that I'm wasting it because I didn't like it anyway. And, you know, for £3, you know, I can make 24 attempts at different things. Um, and the quality is really good. Um, though... I'm beginning to su suspect that they may be phasing them out because there seems to be less and less and less. The shops rarely have them anymore and you have to go online to get them. And they used to be like five or ten around at the same time. You know, you go online and you could choose. But now there's only a few. So I'm thinking they might be phasing them out. Time will tell. Right, sorry, if you're using magnets, um, you need to put it, let me bring go there, yeah, you need to put your magnet, when we turn over, right, if you're using magnets, you need to put your magnet on here before you stick the paper on, on this side, okay, um, it doesn't matter because I'm probably going to do another button again, if you're using Velcro, it doesn't matter either, but magnets need to be stuck behind something or they pull everything apart. Right, so this is what, that's not quite in the centre, but it doesn't matter. So this is what um, the outside looks like. Just going to flatten everything down properly, make sure it's all nicely stuck. Yeah, right. Oh. Yes, I think if I, if I turn all of this over, I will remember that I have decided I'm going to put these the other way around on the inside. I quite like that red on the inside. Right, okay, so two of, so you want one of, one of your 10.5 ones, uh, sorry, one of your 10 by 8.5 ones, which is this one on the In there inside of your lid um, your 10 point 10 point no sorry not that one that one inside your lid that's the base I'm gonna confuse you totally now aren't I right there we go so on the inside it looks exactly the same as the outside did with only the second panel in and the shortest panel on the left okay right Okay, so by the time we stick this, that crease should be nicely dry. I mean, go, go on and decorate it with anything you want. I'm just showing you how to do the basic crate, but crate with the wrap. Um, I was... I haven't decided what I'm going to use these for yet. So it's just a, ge a generic one. I haven't sized it for anything in particular. I was thinking about a bath scrunchie. But it would be need to be bigger for a bath scrunchie. I mean, you can get one in, but it's a bit, it deforms the box a bit if you try and close it. Um, so I need to decide what I'm going to use them for. And then I can make a bespoke sized one. But uh, as I say, I'm just into creating stuff at the minute so i've got about 10 projects up there that i need to 
get a roll of preps prep done for so I can create the video of. Um, I'm just creating like mad and then end up with a backlog that I need to get sorted. So I'm going to try and get through that backlog this week. Right, that's all the inside ones done. Right, then all we really need to do is stick the crate down there and put the attach the what's it popper. That's the word. Right, I've had various versions, sorry, I didn't mean to knock the camera. I've had various versions of these tools that are meant to put the poppers on. Um, a bit like the tripods for the camera. Uh, and I've eventually found a one that actually works for me, which is this one. Uh, found it on eBay, it was about, about £15, I think. Um, I wouldn't have paid a fortune for it, but the tool, it's the tool that matters. They don't really matter. You can buy any of those. They don't matter. It's the tool. Um, and this tool just works for me. Right. So the theory is you need a, a drawn pin shape one for each stud. For each side of the stud. And then they say male and female. So you need like a one with a big hole and one with a little hole. So that they pop together. So... Just shove them off there a minute so the idea is and don't get me wrong i love these things anything that makes my life easier is brill um i'm going to try and find the middle i'm just going to say if i can mark how far down this goes yeah i'm fine yeah as i said it's a couple of weeks since i did this so i couldn't remember i can't remember all the details you can measure this if you want um, but basically you need a hole in the middle to poke that drawn pin bit through. So you pop that through there. And I don't know if it matters which way, whether it's, you know, the male or the female you use on the top or the bottom. I don't know if it matters. It seems to work both ways. Then you just, with the... The ball shape bit underneath, you just line it up on the top and it kind of finds itself and then you press it down and what it does is it squashes the pin of the drawn pin bit, squashes that down to fill that hole so it holds it in. Quite clever really. But as I say, I've had loads of these, I've had loads of these tools, different pliers and things to do this. And this is actually the only one that I've actually thought was, you know, worked better. And that actually works. They all work, don't get me wrong, but this is the easiest to use for me personally. Right, so again, punch the hole through, try to line it up. I'm probably talking too much and not paying enough attention, actually. Um... Poke the pin part through, put the other bit on the top, put the ball bit underneath on the drawn pin bit and then let it find itself on the top and press and there you go. So voila, one popper. And just much easier than Vel Velcro and magnets and all of that, I, I think it is anyway. And... It might be a little bit more expensive, but for me, money, I got that tool and all of those and the box that they, they come in. So I think it was pretty good value. Right, I'm just putting glue on the base of my crate. And I'm being quite um, generous, as you can see. Get my finger out. Pull that away now. Need to get my finger back in there we go. Glue's still not dry. Craft card takes forever to dry. Right, and now you need to get this in. I'm sorry, my head is going to be in the way, but I needed to see that side. I've given you the measurements, so you've got a little border like your paper on both si on all sides of the crate. 
so you can wiggle it around to get it in position then once you've got it in position all you need to do is spread the glue out it's moved spread the glue out with your board folder and be patient and let the glue dry that way a bit Um, and then you're good to go and you can put in it whatever you want to put in it there we go but you, the only way I can get to the pop is to put my fingers through the holes which is another reason they're there um, so maybe you'll want to use velcro <laughs> there we go right so there you go there's your crate box um, I think that's quite sweet. It's the bottom's not stuck yet, but um, you get the idea. Just be patient and wait for the glue to dry, and you'll be fine. Okay, cookie. So there we go. Your crate box. And I say I think that's rather sweet. Okay, cookie.